1999 Honda Accord with an intermittent no start problem. This is a 2.3 liter engine and uh, history of the vehicle is it's had a recent distributor replaced. I'm not sure if that's related or not. Let's go look in the scan tool now, see if we have any trouble codes. All right, gotta forgive the glare on the screen here. I'm working in the field. I'm going to my codes, my key is on and you see we have no codes present. Let's go back, go to pending codes. We have no codes there too. Some other stuff you wanna pay attention to for no starts would be anti-theft systems. And the thing is with the anti-theft, if we had an issue there, we'd have a flashing key on the dash, which we don't. And then also we'd be losing injection pulse. Another one we can look at that's a nice guide is our RPM, so crank it. See we have an RPM signal. Some other things I've shown in the past is, let's take a look at this check engine light, see what it does. Turn the key off. There's my light, top left corner. I'll show it again. Key off, key on. There's a the check engine light. You saw that initial key, green key, flashing right there with the key off. Nothing wrong with that as long as it doesn't stay flashing after you're cranking. So crank it over. See, we, know, we have no security issues. And again, on the scan tool, we had RPM. Okay, doing a real quick spark test. Hold on. Hold on, Pete. A little trigger happy on me there. I was talking to the camera, not you. <laughs> All right. We're doing a real quick spark test on this Honda. I just pulled one of the plug wires off. Got my test light going to a ground on the strut and we're just gonna see if we have spark here go ahead and crank it okay good all right we got spark all right next quick test I'm gonna go after the injector and see if we have pulse and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my test light connect it to battery positive and I'm gonna go on one of the two wires here and I'm not poking my test light into this connector something that was pointed out to me in some other videos where it looks like I'm doing stuff like this. I'm not, I'm just laying this test light on the top of that terminal right there. All right, crank it for me. Okay, got nothing on. Okay, I'm gonna move my test light over, over to the other wire. Again, I'm just resting it there, guys. I'm not, I'm not spreading this female terminal. We'll watch our test light, go ahead, crank it. Tough to pick that up in this sunlight. Let me get my camera closer. Go ahead, crank it. Okay, we have injection pulse. There's other ways to do it too. We can leave it plugged in. And we can back probe it. And I can put a scope on it, things like that. I mean, we're just doing some quick tests here, find out what we're missing. We do, however, want to check this injector for power. So we'll make sure that we do that. I do have injection pulse, but let's make sure we have power to the injector. I'm just plugged in. I'm going to do a back probe. Key on, Pete. Go ahead, crank it. Okay, good. That's the feed. Now, if I go to the control, I'm going to partially energize this injector, which isn't really good. Go ahead, crank it. I don't know if the camera picked up that pulse. Crank it some more. There's a slight flicker in that. Again, two different methods showing you injection pulse is there. So next thing, let's go back and see if we got power to our fuel pump. Now we could do a fuel pressure test on the rail next, but being that there is no Schrader valve and that is a little more difficult to do, I'm just gonna see if we have power on the pump. Okay, I'm back at the pump. I'm gonna do a quick power check. Just have a test light connected to ground. And uh, I'm gonna go to this pump power feed wire right here. And yes, I put a small hole in this wire. I will fix that when I'm finished. This is an interior wire. I'm not worried about corrosion anyway, but for you guys that hate when I do this, I understand. But I really don't have an option for where this is. Now I could take this cover off, I take that back. I could take the cover off and T-pin it. So sorry about that, guys. Okay, go ahead, crank that for me. Okay, good. All right, so you see we lost power to our fuel pump. So again, just some other tests that you can do. Gives you a guide, not really relevant to this car, 
we're missing power on our fuel pump just want you guys to keep that in mind check your rpm that lets you know that uh, cam and crank signals are good and at least gives you a guide to that anyway we can't say with 100 percent certainty that all of the inputs on the ignition are good but we're not worried about it we have spark we have injection pulse we are missing power to the pump i know what you guys are thinking and you're right it's the main relay and that's where we're going next and so what i've done so far is i've pulled it down i'm not going to take it all the way out yet um, I have it disconnected from the, the housing. I still have the electrical part plugged in because I wanted to show you guys the arcing you can actually see on this middle terminal right here. And uh, I'll get you a close-up shot of that too. You can see it's, it's definitely uh, got the issue. A melted solder joint or cracked solder joint. This one actually looks like it's melted and cracked. Uh, let's see if I can get some arcing for you. I need an extra hand. Pete, can you crank this for me, buddy? I'm gonna wiggle this connection here, see if we can make his car start. There it is right there, it's running. I'll leave it run. I wanna see if I can get, show the arcing in this. Go ahead, crank it. Man, I, I had some nice, I, I had some nice arcing with it before. All right, let off. Let's see if I can get that shot. Cause it was really cool looking. Go ahead. Hold on. Be nice if I can show that. I'm gonna try. It just makes for pretty cool video. That's all. I mean, it isn't really necessary. It definitely needs the needs the fix. Just would like to see the arcing. Actually, you know what we could do is instead of cranking it, just turn the key off and back on and we'll, we'll get the fuel pump prime taking place. There it was. Let's see if I can make it do that again. There it is again, go ahead. Turn the key back on. All right, start it back up. All right, we're gonna pull this relay out. Hopefully you guys saw the arcing. It really doesn't matter. I'm gonna show you this uh, solder joint and how to fix it. Start it back up again. I'm gonna run in the back and get you a get you a reading off of that off of that pump wire. Go ahead. All right. Okay, here's our same wire. Here's our same wire where we were before you see I got power and that is black and yellow wire at the pump. Pretty standard Honda color. I didn't even grab a diagram. I knew it just from working on other Hondas. And yes, guys, I did put a small hole in the wire. And I promise you, I will fix it. Okay? So don't give me too much crap. Okay, one last shot of this main relay. Car is running right now. I'm gonna move the relay, you'll, watch, you'll hear the car shut off. Just gonna, a little bit of pressure on the middle of it. So there it was. Main relay, the funny thing with this one, you hear it as I'm wiggling it too. It's going nuts. Um, usually when these relays fail, at least in my experience, the car never shuts down it only will not restart sometimes but in this case the car was actually shutting off too as well as being an intermittent no start all right i got the main relay out just sitting on my tailgate here and you can see clearly this middle terminal it's cracked and and burnt so we'll resolder that one there's another one too and it's on this one right here kind of tough to show you with the lighting um i'll try to zoom in on it yeah, you can see the crack on that one. Uh, right there is a kind of hairline crack that goes around that, that solder joint. That's what we look for. So I'm going to inspect the rest of these very closely, and uh, then I'll show you the, the soldering of them. I'm pretty sure it's just these two right here. So it'd be, it, would be, uh, it would be this one here and then this one here. And really, if you look at that, that's affecting two different circuits. So... It was more than just the fuel pump. I'm sure we were potentially losing power to maybe even the engine computer at certain times. It wouldn't have been 
whenever we caught it though because if we were losing power to our engine computer we'd be losing injection pulse too and we had pulse but but at other times when I was wiggling this I noticed the check engine light coming on and off and I'm pretty sure we were interrupting power to the computer at certain times too. The one I caught with you guys though was mainly the fuel pump. I believe it would be this relay. It's a it's really two relays in one in one housing is all it is. You got your two conventional relays in a box. One of the relays powers the pump and the other one does injectors and I believe the computer and then some other solenoids under the hood. I believe idle air control valve too. So uh, again, crack solder joints, I'm gonna fix it. All right, the two main ones I see on this style is uh, this pin right here, for sure you can see it. This one definitely cracked and it looks like this one started. Uh, I may just hit them all. I don't really have to. I just want, really wanted to point out where you want to look on the on these ones. I showed one of the older designs in one of my other videos. Uh, the reason why this is actually melted here is with this crack over time, it's cracked all the way around on this one. What we do is we generate resistance there and with resistance in an unwanted location it actually makes heat and that's what melts it so the cracking is just from expansion contraction over and over and over over thousands and thousands of miles of uh, driving and on off key cycles you know any circuit board has this situation it's not really anything unique to Honda it just so happens that it's common on this one because this is their design so got the soldering gun very hot that's key using a butane soldering gun again I'm in the field I'm kind of in a parking lot here I'm um, gonna heat the pins and the solder joint itself and sometimes you can do this without even adding any solder at all it's kind of hard to do here what we want to do is we want to see that melt across the terminals and it doesn't take much and that looks pretty ugly. I want to get a little bit more on the board itself. Just want to make sure that I have a good set on this board. Okay, that's one. This one, just want to reset this one. Melt that solder. Can you put your finger on the white part of this back here? Hold that down, thank you. That's the second one. I wanna re-hit this one again. I don't I don't like it on the on the pad itself. It just looks like crap to me. Just wanna make sure that we're really getting enough on this pad. One thing to get them on the pins, but we needed to we need to melt it onto the housing of the relay box itself, and it just looks crappy to me. That's I'm gonna hit this better. one too. Wait for that solder to change color on me. That was a good one. Yeah, I don't like this one either. I'm gonna hit it anyway. I don't wanna burn your finger here, Pete. That was a good one too. Redo that first one. It really looks bad. Let me look at that close up. That wow, looks horrible. This one was just so badly melted. I'll try to hit it from a different angle. Just haven't seen one this bad. Yeah, that 
I like that a little bit better. That may be the ugliest one I've done. <laughs> Go figure. But whatever, we're gonna uh, inspect these other ones real close again. I don't think I need to hit them. And then we'll put this back in the car, see what it looks like. Okay, final inspection of this. I actually missed a little spot right here. We got a little hole. So I'm gonna hit that one one more time. That's better. One soldered PGM FI main relay. Let's put it back in the car. Okay, got it back in the car. Let's give this a shot. Fires right up. I noticed before that on occasion we get a little hookup in the car too. And that hookup is gone and that was just the relay making and breaking contact. And before whenever I pushed on this, stressed it, and wiggled it, made the car shut off. You see we're not doing that anymore. So that is a fix. I'm gonna show you one last shot and that's where this relay is. Let's see if I can, uh, for some of you guys, wanna know where it's at and how to get it out. Oh, I think the key with this, it's very difficult to uh, unbolt some of these. So what we always do in the field is we just take the uh, guts out of it. There's just two little plastic clips that hold it. One here and one here. All you do is take a pocket screwdriver and uh, pry out this way and this way and pop the whole thing out. Instead of unbolting the housing, no reason to do that. And I'm just gonna install this back into its place. And it has a slot. Let's see if I get the right direction here, that's important. Looks to me like it went that way. There's like slots in the housing. Maybe not. New. Nope. I was right in the first place. And it goes that way. Only goes one way, guys. I'm pushing it back in. One repaired PGM FI main relay.